What's going on everyone? Welcome back to our Chicago Blackhawks franchise mode. We are here game number four, second home game in this season um, and currently sitting 3-0-1. Both the Eastern Conference and Western Conference have two undefeated teams and I do mean un-undefeated, not a regulation loss, not an overtime loss. In the Western Conference, both of them are in the Central or our division with the Colorado Avalanche and St. Louis Blues. Over in the Eastern Conference, you have the New York Rangers and the New Jersey Devils. Damn, I don't know what was going on right there. Uh, so there's four undefeated teams. It's kind of ridiculous. I'm curious how long their their stretch is going to kind of be. Um, we don't have a regulation loss technically, so we're still in the running for um, you know last team to have a regulation loss. But we're gonna have a lot of tough opponents coming up. St. Louis Blues, we're playing them next month. New York Rangers, we're playing them next month. Colorado Avalanche, playing them. Like, just in one month span, we're playing three of the four undefeated teams. Like, we we gotta pick this shit up. And because of that, even though we're 3-0-1, I decided to take a look at our lines. Is there anything that I could do to try to bolster it? And this is when I found out Claude Giroux jumped up like a motherfucker. He is now a 586 overall first line elite center. And we have him playing on the fourth line. That, I didn't know you were an 86 elite center when I told you to go kick rocks and forget about the ice time. All right. I didn't know that. Now, some of you guys are probably like, okay, are you going to move him up to the first line, second line? What line are you moving him up to? I'm not moving him anywhere. He's staying as the fourth line center alongside Mackenzie Entwistle and Philip Kurashev. That's where Giroux is going to play. The only thing we changed was our power play in PK. Claude Giroux is now our first line center on the power play over Anthony Sorelli. Sorelli got demoted down to the uh, second line power play. Seth Jones no longer uh, on the power play either. Rasmus Anderson, what happens if I take him out for Seth Jones? Gets us down to a plus three. Um, and if I put Anderson there. Jesus. If I put Anderson and then Jones. Anderson and Jones. Anderson and Jones would give us keep us a plus five. And then down we move down here. I like Lucas Reichel. I like Hapo Caco. Kayla Radish needs more play time. So if we get rid of you and put Korczynski here, gets rid of that. Alright, so Kayla Radish, we put Lucas Reichel. He puts us back at that plus one. Yeah, so we're just going to go Lucas Reichel, and then Taylor Radish needs some more play time. He's averaging like five minutes on ice through four games. Um, so we're giving him that second line of power play. Uh, I am going to take Seth Jones, I think, off of our power play. Uh, I don't want to. I really don't want to. don't know who I would bench like Kako's elite we just found out if we put Lucas Reichel off the squad then it's a zero we could take Brandon Sod off but I like Brandon Sod I really don't want to bench Taylor Radish he is on the first line PK he's getting first line PK time all right, fuck it, fuck it. I'm sorry, Radish. You're going to be benched for Seth Jones. There we go. So Seth Jones is on the second line power play. Lukaku side. Didn't mean Jones either. That's supposed to be Lucas Reichel. There we go. Lucas Reichel, Sorelli, Saad, Kako, Jones on that second line. Gives us a plus one. And then both four man still plus zero. PK, switch this up a little bit. First line PK is a plus five. We improved our second line PK from a plus two to a plus four. So now we got a plus four on that second line PK and then a plus one on the third line PK. Uh, I think that's pretty fucking good. I don't think we should be allowing any power play goals 
really this season. If we do, it'll be it'll be slim. There there'll be a low percentage of them. Um, we did make a change on defense. We wound up calling up Art uh, Artemi Knizhev. Uh, we signed him in this past offseason. He's been playing nothing but the, in the AHL, literally nowhere else but the AHL for the past couple seasons. He's going to get his first shot um, up in the NHL with us. He did play one game. He's literally played one NHL game in his entire career and was a minus two. So we're hoping that this dude will kind of pan off, pan out. He's got the potential of medium elite, might be an 82 top four uh, defenseman, if nothing else. We just put Will Butcher right back in his spot. That's it's a it's a really an easy fix for for him. Um, but he's going to be playing against uh, alongside Nikita Sadorov now on that top six line. Uh, so was there anything else I need to, to hit up? I don't think there was anything else I really needed to talk about uh, the draft class this year's number like first three picks. Uh, the number one overall pick is supposed to be Joe Eaton. 17 year old, 5'11, 184 pounds, 17 year old from the USA. Doesn't have any weaknesses. 200 foot game, offensive creativity, and playmaking ability. He is a medium elite. Once again, no franchise player here. He is NHL ready, and he has a similar play style to Nicholas Backstrom. Now, because they're medium elite and they're so young, they do have the potential to jump to franchise. Oh, but they also have the, that same potential to drop down to, like, top nine. So, I don't know. If a fucking Spencer Knight's not going to get franchised, I don't know how anyone's going to get a jump up to franchise potential. Uh, but that is the first overall pick, or projected first overall pick. Eight goals, eight assists in 14 games, so 16 minus three. Don't like that minus, but he does put up points. The second um, the second overall pick is supposed to be Inu La. Laur Lowry Kainen, Lowry Kainen from the Swedish Hockey League. He plays for Vexjo Lakers. Uh, in 14 games played, he has 19 points, 7 goals, 12 assists, and is a plus zero. And an A plus league, really. And he's supposed to be below Joe Eaton. I would swap that. He's six foot two, 194 at 17 years of age. We don't know anything about him. Let's, let's find some stuff out about him. And then the third overall pick is supposed to be from the USA East. So we got a USA Central number one, and then now USA East is supposed to go number three. Uh, in 14 games played, he has 21 points, 13 goals, 8 assists. This dude is a goal scorer, minus two, no weaknesses. He's great at puck protection, offensive creativity, and playmaking ability. Medium elite, and he's supposed to be playing similarly to Joe Thorin. So those are our first, our top three prospects in this year's draft. Center and two left wings. The first defenseman, not supposed to be going until pick number eight. We got a high first round goaltender like we did with Dangle. Uh, the first goaltender taken off the board is supposed to be 17-year-old Henrik Stromberg. Supposed to be going with pick number 26. Seven games played, five wins. Uh, .869 save percentage, 3.71 goals against average. Probably has really good potential. He's supposed to go in the first round, but a later first round draft pick. We might try to go out and get him, depending on if we do trade away our first round pick this year to try to bolster our team. Uh, but anyways, let's move on into the simulation segment of this uh, of this episode. We're taking on the Vancouver Canucks. This will be our second of three matchups in about a week and a half, a little over a week and a half. We just beat them in our home opener, 5-3. to three. They almost had a comeback victory, which would have fucking blew. Um, but without further ado, let's just keep on going. I think I should slow sim. Like, I mean, I'll, I'll quick sim the periods, but I want to see how long it takes for these guys to, to lose. So first game against the Vancouver Canucks, the 2-1-2 and two Vancouver Canucks. They're looking to give Chicago their first regulation loss. First period. They take a 3-1 goal lead. Their first line, Besser, Kuzmenko, Pedersen. They got a power play goal on night, and Brandon Sods only got one. So we're down by two, being outshot 15 to 10 all right we need to bounce back in a big way here who took that penalty by the way 15 minutes Peyton Krebs you can't be doing that dude you don't have you can't be doing that second period they score another one Atu Ratty it's their top six man their top six is the, is six is the only one people doing anything 
Third period, down by three, heavily outshot, and they score again. Lacrimaki, we lose 5-1 to one in embarrassing fashion to the Vancouver Canucks. Embarrassing fashion to fucking lose to them in. Uh, good, we got another scout, got another scout. Good, good. Welcome, scouts. Welcome, scouts. We've been needing some scouts. Uh, okay, we did offer some contract extensions. I completely forgot I did that. All of them are just minor league deals. This dude got like two years at 0 .8, 0 .8. So a two year, a two-way contract for two years at like 0 .8 million dollars. Um, so congratulations to you. Thank you for accepting. Avalanche are still undefeated. Devils and Rangers are still undefeated. We're not, so we're gonna be advancing, advancing it. Uh, Samuel Savoy, we signed him to a three-year, $0.8 million contract. Uh, Milton Oz Carlson, we signed him to a two-year, $0.8 million contract. Shootout win, wow. Fucking played them twice. First one was the season opener for us. We won in overtime, and now this one we, lo we win 3-2 in a shootout. What is going on? Why are we not having any offensive luck right now? Uh, Avalanche lost their first game. Devils lost their first overtime game. So the New York Rangers are the only team without a loss. Yup, 7-0. and oh, They are the only team that doesn't have any kind of loss on their record. Taking on the 4-4 four and four Minnesota Wild. 4-3 overtime loss. God damn it. God fucking damn it. Now heading on the road to Vancouver. They just whooped our ass 5-1. I expect some some kind of bounce back win here so everybody is done all right so everyone has uh has lost a game new york rangers finally eight games into the season get their first uh first loss of the season so no one's going for that 15 win streak uh so let's go first we're going on the row we got vancouver six one and two they seem to be really good the four and five ducks the 4-6-1 Vegas Knights, and then the 8-1 Colorado Avalanche. So it seems our biggest opponents are going to be Vancouver and Colorado. All three of us only have one regulation loss in this season. Come on, we need this fucking road stretch. We need this win in the road stretch. Win on the road in Vancouver. 5-4 shootout win. 3-1 win over the Ducks. 5-2 win over Vegas. And then a huge 6-1 loss to the Colorado Avalanche. They're looking for another President's Trophy run right now. They're three points ahead of us, tied with the Canucks. Yep, tied with the Canucks. Both of the Vancouver Canucks loss, regula uh, regulation losses have come to us. Actually, one came to us. We gave them one of their overtime losses. But fuck, man. 11 games in, and we have four overtime games. First two of the season, shootout win over the... Oh, no, five. Five of our 11 games have gone to overtime. That is ridiculous. Almost half of our games go to overtime. We got to we gotta do better than that, please. All right, we're heading back at home. Just came off a pretty big loss to the Colorado Avalanche. And we're about to take uh, Capo Caco, talk about his ice time concerns. 15 minutes. Dude, you're on the second line. There's nothing I can do. You are literally on the second line. What the fuck do you want from me? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. He wants more fucking play time. Should we get, put Kako with Sod? I mean, switch Kako with Brandon Sod. So Kako is going to be on the first line now with Bedard and Kane. Brandon Sod. Yeah, our second line is getting scored on. We need to swap that second line up. Feel a rash is a minus one. Fucking Claude Giroux killing it. there, you there, Akurashev on the second line, alright, so let's try, let's try this out, alright, fourth line, Entwistle, Krebs, Athanasiu, second line will be Akurashev, Sorelli, Taylor Radish, fourth line, I mean, second line will be Brandon Saad, Lucas Reichel with Claude Giroux. And we'll have Claude Giroux centering them. First line, Capo Caco, Connor Bedard, Patrick Kane. 
So there we go. There's your more ice time, buddy. You're playing with the top line now. All right, I hope you're happy. Now go out and have a huge fucking winning streak. Our first line defense, big minuses. Minus four, minus five. Second line's good. Yeah, it's not good. We might need to break you guys up. Now, what if we do this? So we have the seventh and sixth overall pick in 2022 as our top defensive pairing. And then we have Seth Jones and Rosmus Anderson as the second. If we do that, it's a plus two. If we do this, it's a plus four. So we got a 91 and a 92 overall defenseman on our, our second defensive pairing with the young potential kids on the first. And we'll swap them so now they're on their one-timer sides. I like it, I like it, I like it. Long passes, create puck battle, puck, 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 puck. Wait, create slap shot from the point. So we'll put Jones out on the left. Our Temi Kanizov, plus one, one assist in seven games played. Doesn't have his first career NHL goal. Let's get in there, let's get in there. And down to an 89. Are you serious? This dude won the fucking Vesna and everything. This dude literally was two years in a row. Best goaltender in the league, and he drops an overall point. Oh, Jesus Christ. Let's give him the franchise potential. So home game up against the Arizona Coyotes following our line changes. We get a 7-4 win. Hell yes. Hell to the fucking yes. Gotta fly to the Long Island, take on the New York Islanders before flying at, back home to Chicago to take on the San Jose Sharks, New York Islanders. Yep, you're welcome, Capo Caco. You're welcome. All right. Fucking welcome. Three nothing win. We get our first shutout of the season. Let's go. Let's go. I hope that was Spencer Knight. It might not be. I mean, Knight had eight shutouts last season. Uh, so I would assume it's him in net. But even if UPL was in, good shutout. I don't care who, who's in net for the shutout so long as we uh, uh, get the shutout. All right. So home stretch, San Jose. San Jose Sharks, Dallas Stars. Anaheim Ducks, Stars seem to be our biggest threat. Sharks could be too. So Sharks and Stars, we're going. To, we need to beat the Ducks. Like this is a. This is literally like put a dub on your calendar already. We're going to beat the Ducks. That's what kind of mindset we need to have. We need and not. Don't let it get to our heads. Like they're still going to. They're still in the NHL. They got the young potential kids, but we should win this game. This is a. We need to win. These ones could be more of a toss up. But, I mean, I still think we're one of the best teams in the league, if not the best team in the league. So, I like to see them as complete dubs. So, let's go. Get our winning streak to a five-game winning streak here in front of our home fans. San Jose, first game up, 6-2 win. Dallas Stars, 2-1 shootout win. Anaheim Ducks, 3-2 overtime win. Let's fucking go. All right. So, 16 games played. Seven games have gone to overtime. Seven games have gone to overtime out of 16 for our team, for our San, for our uh, Chicago Blackhawks. That's fucking nuts. That's fucking nuts. Uh, we are second place in the league, one point behind the Colorado Avalanche. Fuck yeah! Seems like the Central is kind of becoming the tough, uh, the toughest division in the league. Yeah, we got a lot of 20s. Avalanche, Blackhawks, Stars, Jets. We're about to take on the St. Louis Blues. They started the season off 5-0. Now down to an 8-6-1 record. We're about to head on in. It was our owner's goal uh, to beat them in our first matchup against them. First regular season ma matchup. So we're on a five-game winning streak. Looking to make it six here in St. Louis. Let's go. Come on, boys. Make it six. Make it six. First period, right away, Capo Caco scores on Binghamton. First shot of the game, and we take the lead. That's what I like to see. 12 minutes remaining here in the first. We got the shot advantage, power play to Chicago. That one gets killed off. Six minutes remaining here. And Jacob Chichurin, the big free agent signing from last year by the St. Louis Blues. They stole him away from us. He's going to score again on us. Chichurin causes us so much issues when we play the St. Louis Blues, man. Every time. And he's down low, too, like a wraparound or like just crashing the net kind of goal, too. So 1-1. One, one. 
going in the second. Shots seem to be pretty even. Five on three power play. Claude Giroux scores a power play goal on Binghamton. Uh, Binghamton, so 2-1 game now to Chicago. There you go, Drew. Drew, started the season out on that fourth line, gets promoted to the second line. He's got a game, pa, never mind. I was going to say possibly a game-winning goal. But Connor Garland had other plans, scoring with just under five minutes remaining in the second period on Spencer Knight. Up 25-17 to 17 in the shot department, but boys, we need to win this. This is a must-win game, all right? This is a must-win game. Power play to Chicago. Score, score. Fuck. Not going to score. All right, all right. Five minutes have passed, and Bulldock's going to score on night for the St. Louis Blues. Halfway through this third, we need a hero to tie it up. Connor Bedard, Patrick Kane, power play for St. Louis. Killed off five minutes remaining. I'm going to jump in. We got three minutes. I'm going to jump in and see if I can't help our team get this win. Make sure that we got the right visuals on. Go. All right, so I got about a little over three minutes. A little over three minutes. St. Louis up by one. So here we go. Face off loss. Bunting takes it wide, gets hit. Per Perenko to Dickinson. Dickinson over to Michael Bunting. Bunting gets hit off, and Andre Anderson, Austin Anderson, steps along the play, over, oh, Anthony Sorelli, no. And we missed the net, Sorelli, up top, get in, get in, yes! Puts it in the back of the net and continues to add to his total. Yeah, James, 50 goals, that's a number you know that he wanted to get to. It's a real feat, hitting that half-century mark. You know, the longevity to his game and the impact, it continues to grow. Good fucking passing. I think he makes a really good read here, James. He anticipates the play well and gets himself square to the shooter, but unfortunately, this one hits him and he seems to be a little leaky because it finds its way to the back of the net. That all started because Anderson stepped up on that rush. All started because of that. We could go back to the moment it all fucking happened. We played good defense, not allowing St. Louis to get into the zone. But it all started because of Anderson picking up right there. So they're struggling to even get it in. They could have dumped it, but they didn't. Pass it on over to Michael Bunting. We came, pressured him, hit him off the puck, and there it is. Look at that. Look at that awareness. Look at that awareness from him right there. All right, man's back here, sees the man stepping up. He's going to step up, try to play defense, try to cut off his lay, his way right here. And he gets hit, offside goes up, and Anderson steps up, and he's gone. He's gone. I thought we were going to tie it up right here with that pass to Anthony Sorelli, but good toe save by Binghamton. We just keep the pressure on him. Good movement, quick shots on net. And eventually, Anthony Sorelli finds him up top all alone. And thank you, Binghamton, for not being able to field that one cleanly. A minute 37 now remaining here in the third period. Chance to win it with four overtime. We also got a chance to lose it. Bedard loses the faceoff. Jacob Chichurin stepping in. Fly to Chiru. Good hit. Good step. Patrick Kane. Come on, Patty Kane. Oh, he just doesn't have the speed that he used to. Falk's going to dump it in and off the fucking corner of our bench. That's going to be a whistle. Connor Bedard. Again, trying to get this face off win. Losing it again. We keep getting good timing, but just not enough to uh, get that goal. I mean, win the face off. Delayed penalty on St. Louis. Everyone standing still that I wanted to pass to. That mate just covered my defense in Bedard. Pavel Buchnevich, two minutes for tripping. I didn't see the trip. Where did it take place? All right, I guess there was a pretty clear trip that I just completely missed. We got a second line power play unit out there for the 13 seconds. Won the face off, Anderson. Trying to go back to Orson! Putting the special in special teams, they Whoa. take the lead! And often when you're on special teams, James, something can go either way in terms of the momentum. If you don't generate anything, it goes the other way. If you generate something, it's all in your favor. I'll tell you what, that was execution. 
Rasmus Anderson, man. Just try to pass it back door again. Goaltender gets the puck and his defender kicks it in the night. I mean, in the net. In the night. In the net. Holy shit. Rasmus Anderson, first star of the game, 100%. Two goals to tie it and win it. To tie it and win it. Rasmus Anderson, that's a big free agent signing right there. That's a free agent that you're like, yes, thank you for signing here in Chicago. I don't know how that second one went in. Both of our goals were kind of very fluky goals. Very, very fluky. And I don't think uh, I could get them to go in again, even if I tried. 100 attempts and they probably wouldn't go in. So big 4-3 win there. Get out of here. Now we got a promotional game up against the Seattle Kraken. We're gonna let the commentators take over in the first period as per usual. Actually, let's take a quick break. Let's take a quick break right here. Just take a, a recap what's happened through the first 17 games on this team. So, quick look. Connor Bedard leading our team in 20 points in 17 games played. Patrick Kane, second place, 18 points in 17 games played. Look at Claude Giroux, 15 points in 17 games played. Love to see it. Anthony Sorelli, 14 and 17. Rasmus Anderson now fucking 12 points in tw uh, 17 games played. Hoping Capo Caco can improve those numbers. Fourth line doing pretty good too. Kinezev still doesn't have his first goal of the season. Uh, plus minus. Korchinski minus six. Athanasiu minus five. Payne Krebs minus three. And Lucas Reichel minus three. We need to improve that, buddy. We need to improve that tremendously. Goals leader. Yeah, Connor Bedard with nine. Patrick Kane's got seven. Goaltending stats. Yep, so that shutout was Spencer Knight's shutout. He's nine, two, and two. But look at UPL, four and oh. That's what you need from a backup goaltender. Less than two goals against average, a .935 save percentage. Love it, love it. Got him another like four years too. It's not leading the league in wins. That's going to Igor Shosturkin. Rookie skaters leaders going to Jonathan Lekromacki for the Vancouver Canucks. Gold, rookie goaltenders, Sebastian Kosa, Kasa seems to be the leading rookie goaltender. 11 games played, four wins, five, uh, five, yeah, five losses. Um, all skaters, points leader goes to Nathan McKinnon. 17 games played, 31 points. Tim Stutzel in 20 games played has 30 Goals leader leader is Tim Stutzel with 15, along with Karel Kaprizov. Assist leader going to go to Nathan McKinnon with 19. Best plus minus Gabriel Landeskog with a uh, plus 18. So those Van uh, Vancouver Colorado Avalanche man, they really want a fucking cup. They really want a fucking cup, and they might get it. Uh, but anyways, let's jump on into this game promotional game against the Seattle Kraken. Hopefully you can pick up a dub here. What's the promotional event today? Was it a uh, bobblehead night for uh, Seth Jones? Can the home teams keep the good times rolling? Hi everybody, welcome back to EA Sports. I'm James Sabalski. This home squad is on a heater. Both teams seem ready, and they are about to drop the puck on this opening faceoff. The Kraken with established possession here early in this one as they win the draw. Handles the pass. Scores! And quick as a hiccup, they are on the board here in this one. Well, that's a dream start, James, and it's one they were looking for. You want to come out, you want to get out front, and you want to dictate pace. Having another look at it on the replay, we can see that he got a piece of it, but just not enough, and it squeaks through to the net. Seattle's on the board quickly here in this one, and wow, what a start. Yeah, this feels good if you're the away team. This is exactly the way you wanted to start. This is exactly the way the coach drew it up, and maybe even better. And they've got the puck after that neutral zone faceoff. Chicago's got a hold of it 
along the wall. Good hit to pump him off the puck. Puts it on net. Oh, and I think that pain of glass got busted after the shot as the whistle blows the play down. That was a blast of a shot. It just shows how strong the glass is and the technology, the new technology today, James, is it just spiders. But it has to be replaced because it's always about safety first. Puck scooped up by Dunn. Romanov's picking up momentum through center. Great use of the stick in the defensive end by Bernard. Chicago's got the puck in the defensive end. The Blackhawks take it along the wall. Great hits up play with the stick by Dunn. Seattle's got it in their own zone. The Kraken have the puck on the attack. The Blackhawks take it across the line. And a stick in the lane ends that threat. Great defensive effort with the stick. Taken by Gore. That knocks him off the puck. Seattle's on the attack. The Blackhawks gain possession. Right on Main Street and on the attack. Moves it quickly over to Romanov. The Blackhawks gain control of the puck. away at center by Reichel. Into the middle of the neutral zone. Denies him! Quick pass across to Anderson. Oh, and another save! Georgiev's been great to start this season. I mean, he's got an excellent save percentage. His team's been winning games, and he starts another one with an incredible save. Slides it across to Sorelli. Quick feed to Evans. Handles the puck. Driving right to the front! the goaltender. Puck is frozen, and we get a stoppage in play. The Blackhawks have had an excellent start to the season, and this isn't easy to do, especially when you have moving parts, different personnel coming in, but they found a way to match some chemistry and to build some confidence. The wins, they do it for you. Absolutely fearless to step in front of that shot. The Blackhawks move the puck in the defensive zone. Here's a chance! Oh, he gets a blocker on him. What a stop by Georgiev. Seattle's moving the puck through center ice. Dumps it in. Chicago's got the puck along the wall. And they continue to fight for that puck along the wall. And now it's grabbed by Jones. With possession along the wall. Every coach is gonna tell you, get in front of the goaltender and take away their eyes. It was the goaltender's job to find the puck, he finds it and makes the save. More than half the period has expired. one nothing the score. Taken along the wall by Winberg. Passes on over to Borkin. Looking to make something happen in the offensive zone. Teams are ready to go, and we're about moments away from puck drop. Seattle's won it, now they'll go on the attack. Takes control of the puck. Athenasi is taken down to the ice. We got a penalty coming up. Well, the bench doesn't like this call, James. It's untimely to say the least with that one goal lead. Now the PK unit, they gotta get out there and they gotta do a job. Moves 
to Sheru. The Blackhawks cross the line and gain the zone. And that's some great pressure in the offensive end by Bedard. Puck moved back to the neutral zone. To the left side. Monster power stop by Georgiev. Trying to clear the puck. And they get the puck out of the zone, and that's a break for the squad. Oh, uh, yeah, this PK unit, they're out there for a reason, James. You have to be able to clear the puck, and it's easier said than done, but they make no mistake this time. And a big kill keeps the one-goal lead intact. We're back to even strength. Well, they're going to continue to trail here because they weren't able to get the equalizer on the power play, a missed opportunity, and really, timing is everything, so they'll have to figure out a way to dictate pace and get back on the board. Oh, and he lays a thunderous hit there. Let's see what the officials are calling. Well, everyone has a role. This PK unit knows that they not only have to kill this penalty off and keep the game within reach, but maybe they can be opportunistic and pounce on a loose puck for an opportunity. Seattle's man advantage unit will take to the ice for the first time tonight. First power play opportunity for this team. It's going to start in the face-off circle, getting possession with the win, and then looking to set up. That's a smart read with the two centermen tied up. And that goes off a player in front. Takes it into the slot. Wide. Players work too hard to have the puck on their stick and to get to scoring areas to not hit the net. Even if they don't score, they'll get a rebound if they at least hit the tender. Moves it quickly over to Segura. shows you how quickly the game can change. You're down by a goal. You want to make sure that the deficit is in two and kill it off. And you wind up going the other way and getting the shorty, which winds up being the equalizer. Rifles ready for the draws. They will continue to try to kill off this penalty. Seattle's come up with possession after that neutral zone draw. Huge steal in his own end. And they send it down the ice. Looking to break out here on the power play. Seattle's looking to break out. Quick pass to McCann. And that's broken up in the defensive zone by Reichel. And they'll get it out of the defensive end. Moves the puck along the half wall. Quick snap. Long jam in front. That's broken up. From the top of the offensive zone here. Centering feed. And a new pass. And that's off target. Broken up with the stick in the defensive end. Well, the man advantage unit might welcome being back and even strength after giving up a shorthanded goal in that power play. That's a tough one for the power play team here, James, giving up a shorty on that one. What matters now is what you do next. Reset, refocus, and attempt to get back in this one. It whistles across the line now and on the attack in the offensive end. Here's a blast! Still 40 more minutes left in regulation time. We'll get to the second period right after this. All right, 1-1 one, one game going into the second period. We scored a short-handed goal with Kierchev. That's our first time seeing him score a goal with our team. Now we're looking to uh, kind of extend our lead. We are out shooting the uh, Seattle Kraken. 10 to 3. So the fact that they're even in this game is kind of baloney. Jerry McCann. Oh, we made him skate offsides. Good step up there by Kako, making him have to make a move at the blue line. Teammate was not ready for that, and they skated offsides. Jesus. That dude fucking turned into a plank. Patrick Kane misses the hit on Dunn. Dunn and McNabb. McNabb hit along the boards by Bedard. Bedard to Anderson. He successfully breaks it out to Capo Caco. There you go. Good shot. 
Pretty much a dump and chase. Loose puck. Romanov's going to get it. Oh, I hope that hit wasn't late enough. It wasn't. Good. Mick Bedard with the body. Burn. Bernier. No. No. Loose puck out in front. Oh, loose puck out in front. Good fucking stick battle. Uh, we got to break it out. Jones. Up to Kane. Back to Anderson. Anderson over to Kako. Oh. No, I fucking missed it. Kane, how do you miss a puck that's sitting right there for you? Connor Sheary in for Seattle. Stops, look for someone out front to Johnny Gore. Misses the net, thankfully. That was a good scoring opportunity for him. We're going to slow things down. I want my defense to get a nice line change. I actually really want everyone to get a nice line change. There you go. Kiyos off. Back up. Trying to snipe it. Not going to work. Brandon Saad hits our own teammate. Good stick there on board, forcing the offside. That's not right. It's not Seth Jones night. It's not. We just look. It's Spencer Knight bobblehead night. Why is Seth Jones there? We literally just looked at this. Do they just not have a bobblehead for goaltenders? So when they so they just went with the next best thing. Oh my god, that sucks. Fans come for Spencer Knight bobblehead night and get Seth Jones instead. This would have been the first bobblehead night for him. Oh, Kurashev, lift that fucking thing. You gotta lift that fucking puck. Christian Dvorak trying to get around our defenseman Sidorov muscled off the puck though. You're not gonna get by Sidorov. Sidorov to Knizhev over to Kershev. Back to Sorelli. Trying to get it up to Taylor Radish, but for some reason it went to the wrong guy. Christian Dvorak over to Matthias Josephs offsides. Halfway through the second. Still 1-1. Seattle hasn't gotten a shot on net yet. Oh, Sorelli got folded. At least he's not hurt. At least he's not hurt. So we got a fantasy Uchrez and Entwistle. So fourth line versus fourth line. Let's go. Kershev. Back over to Jircek. Trying to pass it up, but everyone's caught flat-footed for uh, Chicago. Shooting for a rebound. Fantasy couldn't get there. Burkowski to Wenberg. Wenberg offsides again. Seattle can't get past that offsides of the blue line. Not even going for a dump and chase strategy. Just can't. It's good defense by our Chicago team right there. Kind of the first time I'm seeing so many offsides by the computer. There's a dump for Krachinski. Good grab. Up the boards to Peyton Krebs. You got speed. Use your speed. Dump it in. Goes behind the net. Fantasy. Pop. Try to pressure Jonathan Druin. Doesn't work. Burakovsky. Crossed, oh, the Wenberg almost got it back door. Thank God Knight can move side to side. Good block there. Wenberg up to Romanov. Evans shot, gets deflected wide. Krebs, pinned along the boards, gonna pass it up to Jircek. Jircek hits a Thanasiu. Thanasiu throws it across the blue line to Entwistle, who gets that buff taken away by Wenberg. And Seattle starting to get some momentum here in the second period, end of the second period. Claude Ooh, almost got that rebound opportunity. No one's there. No one's there. It's roaming off, just going back and forth, back and forth. Wenberg, yeah, he's scared. He's scared of getting hit. So we've hit them so many times that they're now like a little worried about it. They worried about it. Slap shot from Entwistle hits the blocker and that uh, redirected out of play. What the fuck? Crab hit the boards and then kind of like leaned on Dunn. And Dunn fell. Uh, Alexander Gorgiev was Colorado Avalanche's uh, goaltender during their two presidents trophy winning seasons but just could not get it done in the playoffs as I said they won the oh, Patty Kane was hit that hard mid-air into the net that would have been cool that would have been really cool but uh, 
like I've been saying the past couple seasons, the, fir the first two seasons of uh, this franchise, Colorado won the President's Trophy with Gorgiev, and they had one win. One win out of nine games. I would be pissed. Paco trying to get out for Bedard. Trying to wrap it. Didn't work. Didn't do the wrap animation. Just shot it in the back of the net. That was bullshit right there. That's what that was. Wanted me to do a wrap around. All right, I'll shoot it in the back of the net. And that's going to be it for the second period. Tied game 1 1 still, though. We've had a lot of momentum. We should have scored right there, but the Arch just scored. Oh my god, I can't believe he didn't fucking score. Shots are 19 to 8 going into the third period. I even double digit shots for Seattle. Like, this is just this is what I'm saying. Like, it's just a complete dominating game against them. And they've just gotten lucky. Gorgiev has made some phenomenal saves, and they've just been lucky. Should have scored twice already. I guess I did have luck on my side the last game we played with Ross and Anderson's goals. So, Bedard wins it back to Jiracek. He's got the game-tying goal right now. Kaczynski off the Kako. Cathar Kako losing it to Romanov, and Seattle's off to the races. McNabb, McNabb out front, good stick lift, good defense by Chicago. Evans down low again, good stick lift again by Kuczynski. McNabb to Bjorkstrand, good poke check there by Kuczynski. And uh, Chicago breaks it out of their zone, not even allowing a shot. Cathar Kako. Trying to pass it up to the defenseman. No one's there. Kuczynski barely able to get it over the gear check, but it was outside the blue line, so they'll have to re-enter the zone. Patrick Kane trying to pass it over to Bedard, missing there. Here comes Seattle. McNabb over to Bernier. Good, easy save for uh, Spencer Knight. Got uh, one more shot before Seattle hits double digits this game. One more shot. So Korczynski gets it for us. Scanning it up, passing over to Brandon Saad. Saad to Giroud. Giroud trying to pass it back to Saad. Intercepted by Shiri. Shiri's pass intercepted by Saad. He skates right into defenseman and we lose it now. Yanni Gord over to Evans. Evans over to Romanov. Romanov's got it for Seattle. Passing to Shiri. Now over to Wright. Wright shot on net. There's shot number 10. Good easy save for Spencer Knight. Taking the hit to make the play. Claude Giroud. Down low to Lucas Reichel. He gets tripped. And we get to see another power play here today. Kubish tripping Alexander Romanov. Reichel was trying to go around the net there. Possibly get a wraparound opportunity. Romanov just gets too much of his skates. Thank you. Morgan trying to break it out. Claude Giroux gets poked and it does in fact escape. Ross from Sanderson to Giroux. Wide to Bedard. Bedard out front. Kane trying to tuck it. My ball can't do it. Bedard's putting on pressure though on Seattle. Bodying everyone. He's got two cracking on him and no one from Chicago is going to come support him. Why are we being outnumbered on the power play? Why? Kane to Bedard, Bedard to Giroux. Giroux cuts to the middle, trying to get around Josh Manson, no good. He'll throw it up and off the glass. 40 seconds remaining on this power play that's been extremely, extremely ineffective. Patrick Kane down low, curls back, button hook to Anderson out front. He should have just took the shot. He should have just took the shot. 10 seconds left, this is their last rush. Bedard over to Kane, Kane out front, shot save. Bedard picks it up, back to Drew, five on five. He just passes it basically to Gorgiev. We get an offensive zone offensive face off with 12 minutes left in the uh, third period.
Drew will goes wide to Saad. Chicago up to Drew. Drew shot misses the net. Hit the net and score. This game should be over. Bernier to McNett. McCann. McCann to Bjorkstrand. Bjorkstrand back to his defenseman Evans. And Elia hit off the puck. Saad will kick that puck out of the zone. So Seattle's looking for more zone entry. They go for a line change. Seth Jones out front to Drew, shoots right into the glove of Alexander Gorgiev. Another offensive zone faceoff, 9.09 left here in the third. We go on the road, back to back games. We got the Ottawa Senators up next. Could be a tough opponent, could. Not saying that they will, though. Denisev shot. He's looking for his first NHL goal. We get to see it, see it here tonight. I'm going to lose my shit. There's a penalty. No penalty, ref doesn't have his hand up. No penalty, I thought we just got a hooking call. Taylor Radish for hooking. Evans up to Yanni Gore. Gore gonna go wide to Manson. Manson takes the hit, still holding on to it. Right out front, trying to go five hole. A good save by Spencer. Knees that moves it up to Taylor Radish. Radish dumps it down deep. Seven minutes remaining here in the third period. Morgan pin, wide to Giroux. Drew over to Connor Sheary. Good sticks, boys, good sticks, good sticks. There you go. Knock him off that puck, Radish. Two on one in the defensive zone. Taylor Radish cuts to the middle, skates right out of man. Still has it, but doesn't do anything with it. Just standing in between three Kraken players. Alexander Wenberg. Good hit, good hit. Mackenzie Entwistle's got it for sure. Got our fourth line out there. They haven't really done much. Not since we took Giroux off that fourth line, but our team is winning. I just wish we were, had a, a better plus minus. He just a door off wide to end whistle. Trying to cut to the middle, doesn't work. Wenberg out front of Tennessee, backhand opportunity just gets blocked down. Burakowski poked off that puck, goes back into Seattle zone. Jorgen Reed Rubin, pressured, but Reed Rubin wide to Drew in, now back across the ice to Wenberg, will dump it into Chicago's side of the net, uh, side of the zone. Korczynski getting pushed down low. Entwistle trying to battle to get it out of the zone and does. He gets it out, but Seattle's got it. Alexander Romanov uh, zone entry. Shot on net goes wide for a save inflected wide. Warp train out front. Romanov shot wide again. What a boy. Conver Dard up to Capo Caco. Caco out front. Patty Kane. Kane! So Patrick Kane right now, uh, his literally all-time records for Chicago, he is in the running for two of them uh, right now. One of them is the goal leader trying to pass Bobby Hall. He needs to score around 50 to 60 goals this season to beat it. I still, So I think he's going to have to, it's going to happen next season if he comes back. Um, and the other one is se uh, seasons played on the Blackhawks. Um, right now, he's on season number 20 uh, of 22. Uh, 2022 is uh, 22 is the leader. I can't remember the guy's name, and I feel so bad because I hyped him up as one of the goats for Chicago. Stan Mitka. Stan Mitka. That's the name. He is the uh, longest stretch right there. Patty Kane, two goals. Patrick Kane, 
based off of uh, what Conor Bedard has been doing so far in his career. Uh, he does seem to be a, a more of a goal scorer, so once Kane retires, we'll have Conor Bedard pretty much scoring all of our fucking goals. We'll just be looking to give him some weapons to help assist him in that, mat, uh, in that matter. The fact that Bedard gets a chance to play with Patrick Kane, huge. Huge. We only allowed 14 shots that game. Ridiculous. That's ridiculous. Uh, so big win right there over the Seattle Kraken, moving our winning streak up to seven. Seven, right? We're on a seven-game winning streak. One, three, six, seven. Yep, seven-game winning streak heading on the road. We're going to take on the 11-6-3 Ottawa Senators and then the 10-7-1 Minnesota Wild before heading back at home to play the New York Rangers. Chance to make it a nine-game winning streak. Uh, I'm sorry for how I've been playing. Try to persuade them. We're still winning games. Fuck you then. All right, fuck you then, Taylor Radish. Uh, Claude Drew, you literally are playing first line penalty minutes. Be a team player, bitch. Good, good, good. You are a team player. That's what I like to hear. You're getting second line play time and first line power play time. Like, shut the fuck up. Lucas Reichel, I'm sorry for how I've been playing. Our team's winning. We're on a seven game winning streak. Why is everyone coming to bitch at me? Seven game winning streak. Shut the fuck up. All of you. Shut the fuck up. Seven game winning streak. Oh my God. You just came here. Literally same day. The same day. Oh my God. Ugh. Uh, Tyler Mott, left wing, got placed on waivers by Toronto. We work on our fourth line, it possibly. So far this season, one game, no points down the minors. That was a takeaway to giveaway. Takes away the puck more than he gives it away. Statistically, he's kind of been moving all over the league. No, he gives the puck away more than he takes it away. Uh, I'm going to decline. We don't need him. On to a Senators, 6-5 loss. So our seven-game winning streaks ends with the Senators. Regulation loss. That's our third loss of the season, too. But we bounce back big with a big road win over the Minnesota Wild. 7-1 win there. Heading back at home, we got the New York Rangers and Buffalo, uh, Buffalo Sabres coming on up. We're trying to catch the Colorado Avalanche right now ahead of us by three points. Uh, same games played, just ahead of us by three points. Uh, I think we can still pass them um, if we play good enough. New York Rangers, 14 and four. Yep, that's that's a tough fucking opponent. Uh, they're trying to battle for the President's Trophy right now. If they beat us, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. We need a big fucking win here, big team win here against the New York Rangers. And we're going to need another big win here against the Buffalo Sabres. Bat wow, New York's got good fucking teams, huh? Good hockey happening right now. New York Rangers, fuck the restricted free agents. 3-2 shootout win followed by a 4-3 shootout win. I mean, 3-2 shootout loss to the Rangers followed by a 4-3 shootout win over the Buffalo Sabres. Uh, not bad. Not bad. Not a bad performance. I'll take it. We got a point out of both of them. Two points from the Sabres. We are now four points, though, behind the Colorado Avalanche. They are on a heater right now here in the Central. It's really just a big battle between them and us for top of the league right now. Patrick Kane leading our team. 28 points, man. 28 fucking points. I'm loving to fucking see it. Loving to see it. All right, my bad there for the little cuts. Uh, where were we? We were on the road up against Buffalo. So we got a road stretch against the Buffalo Sabres and Tampa Bay Lightning before heading back home to play the Tampa Bay Lightning there. So we got the 10, 6, and 5 
12, 8, and 2. All right, above 500 teams. Going to be a little tough. We're just coming off a shootout win against the Buffalo Sabres, beating both New York teams. Now looking to beat them again. What we got happening in the draft. So, yeah, no franchise player, just 17, 8 year old, 17, 18 year old. Holy shit. This dude's almost a goal per game from the USA East, number three overall. 22 points, 22 games played. Yeah, this dude should be number one. Ray Ta uh, Tavares, Tavares, he should be the number one overall pick right now. Uh, potential, we got any potential franchise players? No, no, we don't. No, we don't. But we got you guys. That might be something. Five, three, 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 three years. Second rounder, I'm gonna take it. Five foot eight from the OHL. Yeah, we're gonna have a small team if I do that guy. Uh, any gems? Two gems, good. So we got Jose Bartley, an offensive defenseman, supposed to be, our scout says he's ranked 35th. He's supposed to go in an early second round pick. No weaknesses, offensive instinct, foot speed, and passing. So he's fast and he's got a three year uh, NHL ETA. Cycle pinch, I think that works with our head coach. Uh, and then we got Clayton Tubert. Supposed to be an early third round pick. No weaknesses, goal scoring, offensive instinct, and pro release. A minus for the shot category. Again, three year ETA with a low top six forward. 7 5 win over the Buffalo Sabres, followed by a 3 2 regulation loss to the Tampa Bay Lightning. So we're going to be looking to try to get some revenge on at home against the Lightning four game home stretch. We got the Tampa Bay Lightning. Okay. Ottawa Senators. Toronto Maple Leafs and then Vegas so the only so three of these four teams are pretty fucking good Maple Leafs being the top of the Atlantic Tampa Bay Lightning right underneath them and then right underneath them is the Senators so we got the three best teams in the Atlantic followed by the Golden Knights that are trying to turn their season around Jesus still two points behind the Colorado Avalanche as well so Still trying to battle back on them, and they got a game behind us. We played one more game than them. Damn. Damn. All right. So, home stretch. Tampa Bay. Come on. Bounce back win. Bounce back win. 5-2 loss. Not something you like to see. Claude Giroux, mild concussion. He's gone for the remainder of December. Damn it. Uh, we don't really have another center. Uh, we'll put... Grab Kurashev, place him with Peron, and then grab Peyton Krebs, replace him with Kurashev, and then put Kurashev, I mean put Krebs in for Giroux. Lucas Reichel to the second line center. Yeah, we'll move Lucas Reichel to that second line center. With a Thana CU. Yep. Keep it like that. Toronto, 2-1 overtime win. David Jerick, broken nose, got in a fight, broke his nose. He'll be gone until after the Christmas break. Oh, boy, here we go. Injuries are starting to plague our team, boys. Starting to plague our team. Lou Boucher, come in there. Jesus Christ. Uh, so neither of these two fucking work, work with Will Butcher or Boucher. All right. So we'll move Seth Jones up with Kurczynski again. And we'll just have Boucher playing with Rosmus Anderson. Hopefully Anderson can lock down the defense. So three game losing streak. Our longest losing streak literally doubled our losses in just a week's time. A whole week of nothing but losses for our Chicago Blackhawks. Followed about with a 2-1 uh, shootout win over the Toronto Maple Leafs and a 3-2 win over the Vegas Golden Knights. This is a game that we should have won. Good thing that we did. Not something I'd like to see, though. Our team has a really bad 
track record in the month of December, like really bad. Last year, we doubled our losses um, by go actually got hit double digits because of the month of December. I think we lost like over half of our games in the month of December last year. Fucking brutal, brutal. So we got a away game up against the St. Louis Blues before we head at home for a promotional game. This is just our annual uh, annual sweater giveaway uh, for everyone in the month of December for to win over the Blues. Not sweater, uh, scarf. This is our annual scarf giveaway. Uh, so that we're looking to just dominate these motherfuckers. Going from 5-0 and oh to now 11-12-3. Yikes. Yikes, we are tied with the Colorado Avalanche again. Canucks are right behind us, same with the New York Rangers. Ease. Jesus. Alright, so let's jump on into this game, see if we can pick up a dub. I think we can.
Dickinson. And he takes a shot. What a block as he lays out, and I'm sure he'll feel that one. Regains possession at center. Here they come on the attack. Chicago's got possession of the puck. Picked up along the wall by Perron. Chicago's got a hold of the puck. Tries to make that cross ice feed. Sends it into the offensive zone. Can't keep a hold of it. Scrum ensues along the boards. Hartman's lugging the puck. The Blues gain the zone. Throws it in. And he takes the pass. Dished on over to Jones. Bedard's taking it from his own end. Moves it quickly over to Shen. Oh, a save by Knight. Receives the pass. Oh, there's one more. What a sequence. I mean, he has been outstanding making consecutive saves. I mean, his defense, they got to start playing. Picked up along the boards by Sorelli. And he takes the dish. Alright, so honestly, pretty boring first period besides Peyton Krez being an absolute legend scoring two goals, already setting himself up for the hat trick today. Uh, but two goal lead to protect. Sometimes I have some I play really well, sometimes I don't. Drop pass it to Jones. Jones, oh, almost snuck it in short side post. Binghamton was screened. Good pressure there. Good pressure. Oh, bad pressure. There you go, Bedard. Make him dump it. Jones bringing it back around our net. Here we go. Zone. Entry. Cross wide to Bedard. In front of Kane. Oh, got stick with it. Son of a bitch. The computer's really cool. The computer's really good at those stick lifts. Every time I press that button, I get it slashing. Pavel Buchnevich scoring in a similar fashion. What the fuck was that? Oh, ho, 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 Did I see that correctly? Okay. Okay, I didn't see that correctly. So I thought that went through his paddle. 
Oh, that one. Knew his battle. All right, so we still got our first line out. Now against their second line. Leads cut in half. Not something you like to see coming out slow-footed. I mean, St. Louis has been kind of all over us. We're going to be getting low shots for both teams. I think they were giving, they had five shots to our four at the end of this period. At the end of the period, this is Reichel gets round one, trying to pass it back to Korczynski. Now back to Saad. Saad just gets a shot on Binghamton. Gets something going. Get that offensive zone face off. Allow a line change. Yeah, they're playing aggressive hockey. Very aggressive hockey. Needs to face off again. Why would I win one? Move your feet when I pass it to you. I'm going to get chased down and out skated. Sod. Sod, no! You're supposed to hit a fantasy. Yep, yep. Why would you pass it in front of the guy so he can catch it on his backhand? He's only an NHL professional hockey player. Yeah, fuck you, Boldick. Fuck you. Dead tired and you're still skating with my guys. Everyone's flat footed. Everyone's flat footed there. Oh my god. Thompson to Kairu. Three on O. Luckily, we get out of that one. Spencer Knight going to save Ryan Thompson's. Ryan Thompson shot there. You know, our team record looks really good, and I think it's the best record we've had up to this point. But Spencer Knight is not looking like the league's best goaltender like he was the last two seasons. Hey, Rev, silky mitts right now. He's really the only guy that feels right playing with. They finally touched the puck, so we get ourselves a power play, two minutes cooking. Hey, and Krebs, he had the puck. And I was touching the puck. The penalty was called back here. So we're just gonna forget that they Hooked him? Coming in here, this is where the call was. was. Peyton Krebs, out front. Toe drag, out front, stick, stick lifted. Oh no, apparently there wasn't a call, but I thought there was a call. It said delay penalty. God. Awful. Awful. Brandon Saad, use your speed, use them legs. Some leg boy. My bad there. He didn't want to shoot it on my backhand because they knew he wouldn't know to pull it over. The Sorellian Radish lose the face off, lower skill. Out front, Connor Garland out front. Oh, if he would have pulled to his backhand, probably would have gotten it. Anthony Sorelli off to the races with number nine there. Fun hook. No, 29 to 29. Literally just a little, here you go. Give me a little nice touch pass. You know, the one that your three-year-old kid could have fucking made. Yeah, Gold explores. This has been causing me issues all fuckers. Here he is. Zachary Gold. Well, this is a real tough shot to handle, James. I he might have dropped a little guys bit early like into that, his no. butterfly, which would have exposed the top of the net. Shooter reads it perfectly and goes top shot. Tie game 2-2. Two, two. Thanks to a bullshit power play that they got. They never had. Yep, not going to stick lift that guy there. 
you know, he only went through his stick. You need to bury those Kako. Fuck. Stop fucking looking. The man looked back and forth like eight times. Oh. Yep, and Patrick Kane, puck on a string, not going to pick that one up. He's just going to skate right over it. Missed the stick lift too, even though it was right there. Jesus fucking Christ. Jesus Christ, dude. Literally never happens. Never fucking happens, but he's gonna fumble with the puck there. Never seen a computer in that kind of a scoring situation fumble the puck. Nice move there by Kane. Pass up front. Yep. Only time that our pass isn't going to go directly to the dude. You want to know what I think was happening here? Wide open man right in the slot. I bet you, guarantee you actually, what our guy was trying to do here was pass it to this motherfucker way up here. Why? I don't know. Because fuck me. That's why. So we got our fourth line out there. Haran, Kuroshev, and Entwistle. Losing the face off, bang. Kachurin up to Garland. Garland. Where? 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 Don't even want to. Where? Must win. It is destiny. It is destiny for the Blues to win. Getting all these fucking fancy ass passes. Getting every puck. Our guys can't fucking win a pat a fucking puck battle. We press A or try to stick lift. We get a hooking. They press A, and you know they're gonna get it. Our guys are gonna skate over the puck. Can't pass correctly. Not gonna get a shot off. Aren't as fast. Aren't as strong. Aren't as smart. Aren't as good. Just period as the fucking. you. Sweep one in. Not gonna happen, but it's fine. Six. Four minutes left here in the second. We've allowed two goals against. Still trying to kill this power play off. Haven't really won a face off. Guess it's still not gonna continue. Continue to not win a face off. Kairu just shakes off my hit. Nobody's moving for me. Nobody moved for me. Everyone just stood still, because, of course. Rebound! Get the fucking rebound! Holy shit. Yup, not gonna fucking hit him. Why would we hit him? Why would we hit him? He might lose the puck if we hit him. Oh no, we don't want the Blues to lose the puck. No, no, we need Blues to win. Uh, where's, where's my hooking? Where's my hooking? Why did, why did they get to take the puck away from me? Right there. How come they got to take that puck? Where's my hooking? He's behind me. His stick's way up there. Yep, just perfect stick positioning. You know how many times I have a guy who's fucking perfect stick and he still fucking doesn't get it? Right there, right there. Oh, look, we got one. We got one, we got one, we got one. We got, one. We got, one. We got a fucking hooking, we got a hooking, we got a hooking. Thank you, NHL. 
for finally giving us a fucking call. Should have called a couple of them earlier, but you know. Whatever, you can't catch them all. You can't catch them all. You can only affect the game. Still can't win a fucking face off though. Backhand, forehand, push, tie up. Shots are 13, 16. Favorite the St. Louis Blues. We just can't get shite going. So third period, they take a slap shot that goes all the way around to their side of the ice because they missed the net. No pressure from the Blackhawks. Stanley just dumps it out of the zone. Power play. Power play, mind you. Sorry, I keep pausing, but this is just power play. Power play. Let's just pin. Okay, power play, meaning we have the man advantage. No one, no one, no one, no one, no one. Skates away, skates away, skates away, skates away, skates away, skates away. Anderson's shot goes about, it would have been good if he was trying to go for three in a football stadium. Patrick Kane of Korczynski, wide to Anderson. Anderson up to Korczynski to crab shot. Not gonna go in. Boldick's got it, dumps it out of the zone, and that's going to be the rest of our power play. Brachinski gets pinned. Kane picks it up. Oh, we got three guys down low, meaning that we're going to have a pretty bad breakout. Anderson on top of Bedard. Shot hits the post. Not going to go in, though. Peyton Krems over to Brachinski, over to Kane. Kane, shot gets blocked. Chichurin has it for St. Louis. Pinned at his blue line, throws it or kicks it, and intercepted by the uh, Chicago Blackhawks. Bedard down low looking for somebody out front of Krebs. He's got two today. Shoot something and didn't see. Just over three minutes have passed here in the third period. Both teams got their first line out. Chichurin goes wide to Kairou. Jordan Kairou makes a move, trying to get to the middle. Where's our perfect fucking stick? Chichurin. Fucking Spencer Knight, and see. I am salty, yes, yeah I am. I'm, a, I'm extremely salty, because I gotta deal with this shit every time we watch or play a game. The computer has a perfect fucking stick, doesn't do anything wrong, constantly intercepting pucks, constantly moving their feet, and then I get to watch my team run away, skate right into the defenders, Never fucking or just poke check. You know, they don't, their sticks out in front, but like the computer, like, I mean, when I'm saying the computer, I mean the blues. Like, watch. They can skate it up the boards and right at my defenseman, no one steps up. No one steps up. And even if they were to skate directly into them, like our players do, they just skate right through our guys with the puck. Like, I don't know. Like, our dude never does that. They don't fucking skate into their defense and then hit him. They just don't. Jordan Kairou going the box, two minutes tripping. Guess our team just sucks in the month of December, and I'm seeing firsthand why our team just went on a week long losing streak. Krebs wins it back. Bedard sneaks away from the hit. Jones passes to Kako. Kako, who's covered. You have no one on you. Skate the puck yourself, Korchinski. 
Move it down low to Bedard. Patrick Kane out front, trying to tuck it short side. Um, Binghamton, Binghamton plays it out. To Mibisi, to Alexandrov. Look at this. Look at that. Look at... What the... F interference. Show me this interference. This dude better not have the puck anywhere fucking near him. Thanks. Four on four hockey. St. Louis Blues going to win the faceoff and score. Oh, we won a faceoff. Holy shit. Holy shit. How many faceoffs is that? Is that number two? Seven. Seven. That is our seventh win. Blues have won 16. Right into them. Just skate right into their fence. Perfect. That's what I love about our offense. We skate right at the opposing team's defense. And then when they take the puck away, we're just like, oh, I guess they just have elite level defense. It's not elite level defense. It's not. We just make them look like elite level defenders. Seconds left on this power play. Justin Folk regrouping, passing up to Ryan Hartman. He's gonna skate it into our zone. He gets pushed up, not knocked down, not a big hit, nothing. Not until he was out of the play like we just saw there. Loose puck in front of our net. Oh, okay. Guys there, now I'm gonna battle for it. Power play's over. Anthony Sorelli up to Taylor Radish. Radish dumps it into the zone. We get a little bit of line change. Don't know what number 90's doing right there. Bedard. Bedard looks kind of silly out there. Looked like he was trying to fight. He was like fighting his head. Like, oh, I go for a line change. Why not? Don't do it. Why not? You just go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. The same fucking spot. You don't stand flat footed. You don't. You don't stand flat footed because you fucking will suck. Fuck is this? What is this I am watching? What is this shit I am watching? I am watching my own computers, my team, skate right into their team or into the boards. This is really the only way that you can make a game that like my team isn't gonna win. Because you know my team's better in every category than the St. Louis Blues. But you're like, you know what, we need to make this a close game. So we're going to have the Blues play the game of their fucking life. Uh, six minutes remaining here in the third. Again, maybe it's just the month, of, the month of, of December. Maybe it's just the month of December our team fucking sucks. Does it seem like that's when we lose the most games? Did we just get a tripping call? Nope. Nope. Oh, we were. Uchnevich skates right by everyone to get a breakaway. Wish we got more of those, but their computers know to back the fuck up. Lucas Reichel throws it around the board to Athanasiu. Athanasiu over Knizev. Knizev skating it up himself. Not going to dump it. Gets cut off by their elite defense. Brandon Stein out front. Backhand saved by Binghamton. Offensive zone face off. Four minutes remaining here in the third. Don't worry. Blues have nothing but uh, a bunch of Wayne Gretzky's on their team. Brandon Sod up to Andre uh, Anderson out front to Sod up top to Boucher. Over to Athanasiu. Anyone want to actually take a shot on net? I guess Athanasiu would do it, but then he didn't want to pick up his own rebound. Lucas Reichel trying to go short side. No good. Grace Athanasiu pushed off the puck. That's that's interference. He's not near the puck, man. And then with full pressure, no. Oh, Athanasiu. Okay, so this is just Athanasiu's line. Literally no one else is doing anything except Athanasiu. Grace with NCU pinned along the boards. Nobody comes to help him, so he loses it. All right, full pressure killed, minute and a half. The Athena CU rush is over. Has it out front. Sorelli trying to score when he can. Break away, he just shoots a low pass. Doesn't make a tangle, doesn't, doesn't do nothing. Shoots a low pass right into the end. Like the laziest fucking shot in the world. 
And then he loses the face off. You fucking lazy piece of shit. If it was Andreas at the NCU, maybe we would have scored. It's literally our only two players that I've like have stood out to me today that do, been doing good are Peyton Prex. He had a good first period. And then he had a, a pretty good second period too where he should have gotten called for, you know, getting hooked on. But instead, the ref was like, no, you did the hooking. I saw. I saw. You had puck. You had puck. You hook. Perchinski with it for us, passing wide to Anthony Sorelli. Sorelli trying to pass it to one of our teammates, intercepted, still getting muscled off the puck. Perchinski with it, six seconds remaining. Cut him off, cut him off, defense. Yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. Oh, maybe that's what I gotta do. I gotta cheer for the Blues. I cheer for the Blues and their defense. What's happening right now? Yo, we're supposed to be making him angry. Fuck, he's cheering for us. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, man. Alright, so I'm gonna select the side now. I'm gonna play this. Oh, I'm gonna play over time. Not true broadcast. Always go the wrong way there. So here we go. Connor Bedard taking the face off. Gonna lose it, because of course we are. Interference out front, and Justin Falk skates right in and scores. Skates right in and scores. Just so we are all aware, I'm here. Face off is one. Patrick Kane goes to pressure Justin Falk. What are you doing way over here, Seth Jones? No fucking defense, man. I don't care if they're fucking five years old, man. No defenseman's gonna do that. None. You are never. Show me one clip. One clip. One. I. You can go back as far in time as you want. Show me one motherfucking clip. One. Just one. Where a fucking defender does this. I guarantee you, no matter what level of hockey you play or where around the world you are playing, you will never. Never, ever, motherfucking, ever have this happen. Not even once. Not even once. Not motherfucking once. Not once. I'm telling you, I'm a true believer. If the computer wants to win, they're gonna win. Like, no matter what the fuck you do. You could play on rookie, man. You could play on the easiest difficulty, right? If the computer decides, you know what, you've won too many games, you're gonna lose. It's just how it works. So let's get up to the New Year three game road stretch. Best team in the league, Colorado Avalanche. We need to beat them. We need to beat them this in this matchup. All right, they're a game ahead of us. This is our chance to jump them in the standings. It's a must win game. Boston Bruins should win, and then Detroit Red Wings should be a win as well. We need a dub. We need a dub. Claude Giroux is fully healed. All right, so uh, what did we do? I think we put Krebs in for Giroux. Claude Giroux back on that second line. Luka Reichel was there. Kurashev scratch for Peyton Krebs, and then David Perron. Get scratched for Kurashev. David Jirik, Jirchek is back. How did Butcher do on that second line? Plus four, three points in seven games played. Not bad, not bad for a depth defenseman. Jirchek, grab you. Move you back up here with Kraczynski. Jones back with Anderson. Don't worry, I have no idea what's happening. So we beat the Colorado Avalanche, we beat Boston in a shootout, and then we lost 6-4 to the Red Wings. All right, all right. That's cool, that's cool. All right, so what, last game of, the, of this episode is gonna be up against the Philadelphia Flyers. Let's just quick sim it. 
All right, so first period against the Flyers. We go up 2-0. There we go. Patrick Kane and Brandon Saad score. We got a power play goal there as well. Dana C scores on Connor Hart. We got UPL in that. Morgan Frost scores on him. And then we're going to be score another one. Patty Kane getting two this evening. I'd like to see Patrick Kane get more goals because he is within 40 goals right now of passing Bobby Hall. Um as uh the lead or the chicago blackhawks leading goal score if it doesn't happen by the end of this season like he's got to score like 60 goals this season up to it 100 percent will happen next season if he does not retire um so going into next episode we got a game on the colorado avalanche we are the first we are not the first team to 50 points the vancouver canucks up at 52 points so they are right now are in the running for the president's trophy not something i like to see um take a look at our lines we got good plus minuses everywhere capo caco first lines plus minus pretty good good point production like to see a little bit more out of capo caco uh claude Giroux minus three minus three and a nine yeah i'm gonna need to switch up this second line uh, Lucas Reichel kind of meh this season down there on the third line. And then this fourth line. Jesus. Peyton Krebs, minus six. Kurashev's a plus four, but minus six and then a minus two. Kurashev, we might need to move on from him. Honest, I mean Peyton Kurashev. Peyton Krebs, we might want to move on from him. He's a minus player this season. 11 points, 34 games played. He's giving the puck up more. He's not blocking shots. He's hardly throwing the body. We might want to make a New Year's trade for with Pey for Peyton Krebs. And then instead of, I mean, what would people give us for him? I went to the wrong one. I meant to go find a trade, but... What would someone give us for Peyton Krebs? Third and a fourth, two thirds, third and a fourth, Mello, third and a fourth, TJ Brody, six and a fifth. All right, what if we did that and our first round pick? DeMello, a third and a fourth. Yikes. So that doesn't really change shit. Doesn't really change shit there. All right. All right, looking at defense. How are we looking on defense? His forwards aren't doing really much down in the depth. First line is depth just isn't. Jeer check down to his, his uh, plus zero seven points in 31 games played. Might be on pace to a similar season as last season. Up to an 85, okay. Uh, Kevin Kurczynski, minus seven. He is on pace for his worst season as a Blackhawk defensively yet um seth jones is only a plus one down there and rossmus anderson is a plus 18 and then our bottom six though like they're, they're fucking killing it third line defense is killing it the our stars like our stars fucking suck defensively uh goaltending wise spencer knight is having a, a down year uh, 26 games played, 16 wins, 6 losses, 3 overtime losses, and only 1 shutout this season. He's got a .897 save percentage and a 3.29 goals against average. So he is taking a step back. Doesn't have an assist this season. But yeah, take it a step back. He, imagine this. Imagine this. You have a goaltender, right, who just won the Vesna. He won the Conn Smythe. He's won the Willie Men Jennings two years in a row. He had the league's best save percentage two years in a row and the league's best goals against average two years in a row. He's also won 40 plus games two years in a row. You know what you're going to do to him? Lower his overall. Lower his overall. Yes. Yes, that makes sense. That's what makes sense. We must lower his overall by one. He's too good. He's too good. We need to make him more human. Make him a, a worse goaltender. Yes, that is what must happen. That is what must happen. Uh, looking around the league at our... Uh, looking around the league at points. Let's see who's leading the league. 
Uh, Nathan McKinnon leading the league right now, 33, point, uh, 33 games played with 47 points. Goal leader is Miko Rantanen with 24. So Patrick Kane on my win the he's on pace to win the Maurice Richard right now. Uh, assist leaders going to Adam Fox with 36. Best plus minus goes to Artemi Panarin with 24, along with Mika Sabinajan. Worst plus minus goes to Brant Lark. Uh, most fights in the league. Tanner Janat, uh, Janat with eight. Uh, Jacob, Jacob Middleton, after leaving Minnesota, was like, yeah, I'm not going to fight anymore. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight nobody. Uh, rookie skaters point leader right now is Jonathan Lekramaki. Close second is Jordan Gavin. Uh, first, okay, fifth overall selection in 2025 by the Detroit Red Wings. For him, Lekramaki, 2022 first round pick. Goaltending, no one really interesting there. Goaltending here. Winningest goaltender going to go to Thatcher Demko with 19 wins. Save percentage with at least 20 games played. At least 20 games played. Alexander Gorgiev with a .924 save percentage with the Seattle Kraken. Lowest goals against average. Also Gorgiev with a 2.55 goals against average. Like every goaltender here, I better... Hellebuck is a 91. What the fuck is Hellebuck done? Nothing. That's what. He's done nothing. Nothing. He's not as good as Spencer Knight. Not in this universe, anyways. Yet, Devon Levy. Fuck's this dude done? Nothing. Fucking nothing. He's done nothing. Fuck that guy. Alright. Fucking Jake Ottinger. Fuck you. Literally, 800 save percentage right there. 3.6. Another 3.0 uh, 3 season. Why does this dude get to be better than fucking Spencer uh, Spencer Strider? Not Spencer Strider. That's baseball. Spencer Knight. Like, fuck this. Fuck you guys. Fuck you. All right. But anyways, guys, I, uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. We're going to be going into possibly the trade deadline. We're either going to go into the trade deadline and finish this season. Um, or, or we'll get up to the deadline and do the deadline in the following episode but anyways guys hope you all enjoyed but until next time see you later bye bye welcome to my party we're just getting started a life is a dream or a nightmare story